I believe this is where we left off. I think we did example three at the very end of the hour. So, um, Jenna, who's going to go first? Jimmy, you look excited to be going first. Um, okay, now it's on the previous page if you need to look it up. What's the difference quotient again? So what? Perfect. So I believe, oh, well, well, that didn't write. I believe it says the limit as H approaches zero. Right before it, correct? Okay. So I'm going to write this down first. Now, in terms of the A, um, not a huge deal. So if you want that to be an X, that's fine. I've seen this written a bunch of different ways before. Um, so if the A will throw you off, change it. Now, what I should have done, which I didn't, because I, I forget, you guys aren't used to seeing this notation yet. I'm going to write that first. So if you wanted to say f prime of x, go for it. <clears throat> now I know the purpose of this question was that it was to represent at x equals 3. Hi. Thank you. Phenomenal. So I'm partially thinking of changing the notation in this problem to make you more comfortable with it um, until you're used to seeing this notation more. I'm, and now that I'm looking at your faces, yes, I'm going to do that. I know its intent was for us to put 3 in place of x. But we can do this in stages, since you're not used to it. <clears throat> uh, OK, Jenna, who's ready to go? Thirty-five. 30, I don't think we have a 35. We don't have a 35. We only go up to 33. Twenty-one is Kylie. <laughs> uh, we only do. Next? <clears throat> yeah, like how do I plug things in? Uh, well, let's start with f of x plus h, unless you'd like me to start with f of x. Um, what is f of x plus h? Do you remember? This is what we did yesterday, right at the end of the hour. We practiced doing f of a and f of a plus h. You want some guidance then? Yeah. Okay, we'll do. So what, what I usually like to start with is if we talk about f of 2, that means to do what? Plug, plug 2 in. f of a, <coughs> plug a in place of x. f of x plus h, whatever's inside the parentheses, you put in place of x. So. What is f of x plus h if we are talking about that function right there? Perfect. So we only have one x to replace. 
and that's x squared. So f of x plus h would be x plus h squared minus f of x. f of x is exactly what we were told from the beginning, x squared, all over h. Now, it's OK if you don't totally get this formula from the start. Like, I would 100% understand if this formula doesn't really click with you yet. As long as for right now that you understand that this formula represents the slopes. This is going to be how we're going to find the slopes. Uh, OK, maybe next person, I guess. Jack. Can I do the cell side? Yeah. I assumed you were going to from the beginning. I thought you wanted to stay in to listen. Uh, do you want some guidance then, Jack? Yes. Give, judging by that reaction. Yes. All right. Uh, I was going to ask you what we should try or what we should do. Now, we can't plug in zero because why? You get zero over zero. Okay. <clears throat> well, or well, actually, we yeah, we actually wouldn't get zero, but that's okay. Or yes, we would get zero over zero. What we're going to do on most of these is we're just going to try to simplify. Do you remember how to do x plus h squared? Could you help me with that part? Isn't that just like yep, exactly foiling. Excellent. So did you just kind of remember how to, what something looks like when you squared? Yeah. If, you, if you know how to write it out straight away, just do that. If you can't remember this from the top of your head, off on the side, like scratch work, off on the side, x, x plus h squared would be this. And then you could foil it out on your own. So it, it's OK if you can't do it all in your head. This is kind of what you would do as scratch work. Okay, so yeah, I just wrote the squared part. Uh, do you want to keep going? Or do you want somebody else to go? Yeah, keep going. Okay. And then you uh, put the minus x squared over h, and then you simplify. Okay, what is, um, does anything simplify? You have uh, x squared and a negative x squared. Good. If you do these correct, any term that doesn't have an h will cancel out. So you'll know if you're doing these correct. And the reason this is helpful for us is because since these all have an h on the numerator, I can factor an h out. And you're 100% going to hate these problems because there's so much to rewrite repeatedly. h 2x plus h divided by h. So these problems do work out nice if you do them correct. Uh, you got a question, Didi? No. Okay. Uh, absolutely feel free to ask away if you guys run into something. So, I might just be thinking about the trouble. Do you not just take the h out of the entire problem and just put it in the front of like the entire thing? So it would be like 6 plus 1 over 1 and then multiply by an h? So I just be thinking about that wrong. You can't because this has two of them. Okay. You, you absolutely can pull out an h, which is kind of what I did. Mm -hmm. um, what you were saying is to pull it out and to cancel it all in one step, yeah. which if you know how to do it is fine. Um, but I believe from what I heard from you, you would have written this as a one. Yeah. And that's, you can't do that just because this has two of them. Oh, okay. So I am left with. So much writing. Let's go to the next person. Should we guarantee to be called on the call on the person that least wants to answer? Three. Three. Irene. Um, any thoughts on what we should do next?
Yes. So we're just going to plug zero in place of H at this point. Yeah. Thanks. And, and it works out fine because the part that most students get stuck on is you automatically feel like you should be putting something in place of X. But on these problems, we're replacing H. So your answer is going to be 2X plus 0 or F prime of X is 2X. Oh, we're not done. Oh. oh, we're definitely not done with the problem. So this be like a free response or a test or something? No, no. <laughs> this is just a problem. We are only doing these in this section. This is, I'll give you one of the back in my day stories. You guys may hate everything AP. Some of you absolutely dis, you know, just dislike it because of the way it's set up. Um, doing regular calculus, uh, we were taught how to do this, and we had to do derivatives like this for almost a month. And then also one day, teacher shows us there's a shortcut to finding derivatives, as in you can do it in your head without doing any of this work. We did this for a full month. Every problem was like this. And then he showed us a shortcut. You guys are spoiled because AP does not emphasize the limit definition of a derivative at all. So we do it for one day. And then you're going to be taught how to do these quickly a different way. So we're basically learning this to show you where it comes from. And these are terribly long problems, but you only have to do it for one day. OK, um, next person. Andrew, do you think you could tell me what f prime of x stands for? Slope where? At that point. But that's not a point. And I don't know. Okay, you, you actually have the right answer. So the way you said it was good. So F prime of X stands for the slope, and I'm not going to have enough room, the slope of F of X at any x value. So the slope is 100% correct. That's good. As Once you guys get this idea, oh my gosh, that looks terrible now that I'm looking at the whiteboard. That is pretty bad handwriting on top of it. As long as you will understand that f prime of x represents the slopes at any location. Why are you texting right during the middle of this? This is key. This is enthralling. Mm. Is that you were just trying to text people to tell them how good it was? Exactly. I see. Thank you. Yeah. That was a compliment. <laughs> Once you get this idea, this whole chapter is going to be easy for you. It's going to take you a while to get this down. The original problem said, use the difference quotient to find the slope of the curve at the point three nine. This that I circled stands for the slopes of f at any x location. Who's going to help me answer that last one? Fifteen. Sophie, where do we want to find the slope at? At the x value of three. Of at the x value of three. Nice. So. I'm finding f prime of 3. So f prime of 3 is going to be 2 times 3. And that tells me my slope at x equals 3 is 6.
You guys don't look super enthralled to learn this. This is a big step. This is, this is key for this year. Wait, so, so what we just did is we're trying to find a way to know the exact slope at any spot on an equation without doing a slope formula or without looking at a picture. We're able to find the slope anywhere. So the f prime of x is like unique for each function? It is different for every function you are given. So why did we square um, in the second one? Why don't we just have an x squared plus h minus x squared? Why don't we square the h? It is squared right there. But why? Oh, when we FOIL it? No, like why are we squaring the h, not just the x? I did square the x. Am I, I'm not following what you're saying, I don't think. OK, so you have um, f of x plus h minus f of x, right? Yep. But then it says f of x is equal to x squared. Yep. So why, I get that you're squaring the x, but why are you squaring the h? Yeah, I, I definitely am not following the question. So I'll just, I'll repeat it and maybe I'm going to answer what you're saying. <clears throat> so f of x is x squared. Yeah. f of x plus h means I'm putting x plus h in place of an x. Oh, okay. Oh, did that help? Yeah. Okay, good. Because from what I was hearing from you, it sounded like you were asking why I square the h but not the x when they were together, and that's, that's why I was confused. Okay, good. I need bigger space to write. This is too tiny. Yes? So is there any reason we couldn't have just plugged 3 in for x, like, that whole time? Did like at the very beginning? Not necessarily at the very beginning, but once we kind of canceled the h's so that it was no longer, like, um, like So um, that's what I was saying. So remember how our original formula was f of a, f prime of a? Yeah. So you would put 3 in place of a from the beginning. Okay. And you could do 3 plus h instead of x plus h minus f of 3. Yeah, that's what I did on here. You can. Okay. You can. Um, I wasn't showing that for now because it may not seem like it at all to you at this point. This is going to make it easier for you to learn our next okay. portion. So yes, you can do that. Okay. And it, it seems quicker for right now. It 100% isn't because we're going to learn a much quicker way to do derivatives in general. So what happens to the 9? Is that like an important part? Or is it just... um, the 9 doesn't matter at all. Okay. So it could be like 3, comma So let me, let me draw a parabola. OK, that looks stupid. So I have a parabola there and a parabola here. They're supposed to be identical. Obviously, they're not. But if I ask you to find the slope at x equals 3, they actually are going to have the same slope no matter the height of the point. Okay. So traditionally, what is going to affect the slope on a function is going to be the x value just because just because we have it laid out as a function, x is like our input. Um, so when it, when it asks you at the point 0.39, the point 0.39 will be important for other things, just not the slope. It, it's going to matter on our next question. Are we ready to move on, or is this super confusing and didn't make sense at all? You're just telling me to move on even if that might have been true? All right. And I, I wasn't actually joking. This is a big topic. Like literally the entire rest of the year deals with slopes. And once you get the idea down, it helps you with all of the other topics. So that's why I'm going really slow right now. We most definitely could have done these quicker and figured out the correct, correct answer a different quick way. But the idea is important. Okay, should we, should we try this example number five? So example number five, 
is asking us to write the equation of a tangent line. Do you remember what the tangent line is? It's the line that sits up against the curve to mimic the slope. All right? Back from ELG2 pre-calc, do you remember what two things we need to know to write the equation of a line? Slope. True. I didn't even think of that. Um, Y-intercept is definitely a common one. You need a y-intercept if you're going to write your equation in slope-intercept form. In calc, we frequently are not going to use slope-intercept form. We are frequently going to use point-slope form. Now, this person actually writes point-slope form different than I've ever seen it. And not that this is wrong. I have always seen point-slope form as y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So this is like a different variation of it because the y1 is added instead of subtracted. It really doesn't matter. If you like, if you like the one that's in these notes better, use that one. If you, if you vaguely remember this one that I wrote down, use that one. But point slope is going to be helpful to us because that's the kind of information we usually get. So this says write the equation of the tangent line for y equals x squared at the point 3, 9. So yes, this is the exact same problem from previous, but building on. So for us to write the equation of a straight line, ah, the two things we need, slope and a point. What was the point that we're going to write the equation at? 3, 9, because this one we were told it. Sometimes you're not told the point, you have to figure it out. So do know, that's why I'm writing it like this. Sometimes it seems overkill, except for every question you're given is going to be set up different. The slope, what was the slope at x equals 3? 6. So because we just figured it out on the previous problem, we don't have to redo it. So I know that my tangent line has a slope of 6, a point of 3, 9. So I'm going to write y minus 9 equals 6, x minus 3. Now, if you want to write it with the other form, it would say plus 9 at the end instead. If you are a person who takes very meticulous notes, you might want to highlight the number one slope, number two point. Those are the two important things to remember for tangent lines. Um, I guess we could talk about a normal line where we're, the picture is right there, but we're not going to do it yet. <clears throat> so a tangent line shows you the exact same slope at a spot. Normal line is another name for a perpendicular line. So a normal line has the exact opposite, reciprocal opposite slope. Do you guys think you could do 6a by yourself? No. no. No? Do you want me to help you set it up first and then you yes. could maybe yeah. do work? Okay. So it says use the limit definition, which is, is what the difference quotient was. So f prime of, this one wants at the point x equals a. I don't care if you use an x or an a, it's up to you. I'm used to writing x, so I'm, I'm just going to keep doing that so that it's kind of more familiarity for you guys. So f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And essentially, you're supposed to fill it in with the equation we're using. Should we call on somebody for this? I feel like that's it. Yes. Luke, do you want to help me fill out f of x plus h and f of x? Sure. 
Okay. Okay, how about f of x then? f of x would be 1 over n. Excellent. So x, f of x plus h means that I'm going to write an x plus h instead of writing an x. So you're going to read the exact same thing over, but instead of saying x plus 3, you're going to say x plus h plus 3. I was written so badly. Ugh. Now at this stage, that looks horrible, <coughs> but at this stage you should be able to simplify this on your own. Why the x and then you're not putting the, sorry, not the x, the h? Um, because we put x plus h mm -hmm. in place of x. So wherever there was a variable written, we're going to replace it with X plus H. Oh. I was just wondering why the H was like in between the H was in between. Got it. Got it. See if you guys can simplify this. If you do it correctly, the H is the H from the denominator should cancel out. You guys look like you are skeptical. We haven't done anything. <laughs> so are you lost at what I wrote here or lost as to what to do? What to do next? OK. Um, I, was, I mean, I was making a joke, but it definitely is helpful if you guys can phrase questions more specifically. Like that's a good skill to learn as you get older, because being able to say something specifically will allow you to get help better, too. Uh, OK. so. I guess what I would do is, our, since we're just trying to simplify stuff, I would common denominator them, put them together, see what happens. Just the fractions on the top. Common denominator those two and put them together. I'm definitely worried how many people look lost at common denominator them. I'm going to guess that you would like some refreshers on common denominator. Okay. Let me make it bigger. This is just way too small to write. There we go. So normally common denominatoring is probably easier to do in your head if this said like one third minus one fifth. Because then you know they both should turn into 15. But what you're doing is you're multiplying them by each other, like you're trying to make the bottom number something in common. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. Multiply this fraction by x plus h plus 3 over x plus h plus 3. I am not going to actually multiply out the bottom. Like I'm, I'm going to leave the denominator as written as x plus 3 times x plus h plus 3. So I would have x plus 3 minus x minus h minus 3. I'm hoping you can simplify it down from there. I mean, take a minute and try to simplify that down on your own if you can.
don't have any more space. Oh, what time did we get done? 44, okay. I was thinking it was like 30. <clears throat> so, if, if this was really difficult for you, um, I guess that would tell me that you're going to want to practice a lot of these. This, like, manipulating fractions is something we do for throughout the entire year. Like we do a lot of algebra manipulation. So if this was really tough for you, you 100% want to practice this type of question because we have to do things like this a lot this year. And I would love to be able to, you know, reteach you things, but we don't have time for that. Um, I can I can help you with it before or after school or something if you want to. Um, but yeah. Things like this are something we're going to frequently use. Now, I don't even remember what the question was at this stage because we were doing this for so long. So I'm going to go back up and read it. Use the limit definition to compute the slope of the tangent line. Why can't I move this? Of the tangent line at x equals a. All right, so what I wrote, I wrote the slope of the function at x equals x. If we want to write the slope of the function at x equals a, then that's just going to mean me writing an a instead of an x. So f prime of a would be the slope at x equals a, would be negative 1 over a plus 3 squared. f prime of x is finding the slope at any x value. x equals a was a specific x value you were asked about. How, uh, how is this, how are you feeling about this? Okay. I mean, like, this, this is kind of, Everything you learn this year is going to be new. And that's why you're kind of supposed to just know how to use the algebra for things, because we're learning new ideas and topics. But I will gladly help you, so ask questions away if you're stuck on something and don't get something as we're doing it. Okay, let's try to do B. See if you can figure out B from what we just found in A. So if you need a help, if you need a, a hint to start, I wrote it up there for you. We are trying to find <coughs> f prime of negative one. And in the previous previous thing, we just found f prime of x. Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep, bye-bye. You're ditching out on us. You're ditching us. You're not supposed to leave during Kelk. Okay. 
Um, I'll, I'll have this recorded, so uh, we have very little left after this, but I'll have it recorded. Uh, okay, Jenna, who's going to help me with this? You have been a gracious volunteer since you got volunteered to do it. Yeah. 29, Rosa. Negative one. Um, how did how did you get that? But because I just put negative one into the slope equation that we or the yeah the slope tangent line that we got. Oh wait. You don't sound sure, but you're 100 percent right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just put negative one into the slope of the tangent line that we got in the last problem. That's perfect. The slope at x equals one would be negative one fourth. Okay. When I was common denominator? Yeah, why is it? Why is it just x plus 3 minus, like, the part? Like, why isn't it x plus 3 plus 8? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, so the, the fraction on the left has one thing. The fraction on the right has another thing. Okay. They look kind of close, but they're two different things. So when we try to common denominator, we, we need the denominator to be made up out of both things. So the, generally the quickest way to do it is to multiply them by the opposite item so that it includes both. And I, I think what you're getting hung up on is, is x plus h plus 3 is just a little bit different than x plus 3. No, like, I know that. Oh, okay. When after, so after you find the common denominator and then you, like, or, like, multiply to get, like, the new fraction or whatever, why is the numerator x plus 3 minus x plus h minus 3? You want to know about the minuses? Yeah, and then also why isn't it, because if you're, like... Okay. I don't know if you're so right. there's, there's a minus sign to start with right there. Mm -hmm. And the second fraction, the numerator would be x plus h plus 3. Since we are subtracting the whole second fraction, if we're going to combine everything together, we are just going to subtract each term individually. Okay. And so it's like distributing out the negative sign. So that's, that's why the first one it just stayed x plus 3, like there's nothing with it. Why would there be Um, I didn't multiply it by x. I only multiplied the first one by x plus 3 over x plus 3. Oh, okay. The, the second one I multiplied yeah, okay. by the, something with an h. By that. Oh, gotcha. No. No, so x plus 3 was considered one thing, second thing. Oh, okay. So then both denominators were made up of both things. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about b? Were we okay with b? Yeah. yeah. All right, good. How about C? Write the equation of the tangent line at that same spot. Maybe we should semi-do this one together and then be done here. Jenna? Twenty is Pana. What were the two things we needed to write um, the equation of a tangent line? Excellent. Slope and point. Okay, so slope we just figured out was negative one fourth. How about the point? It doesn't really mention a point anywhere, does it? No. Um, what was the only thing it told us? At x equals negative one. So we know half of the point. Half of the point would be x <coughs> equals negative one. And we have to figure out the y value by going back to the original function, 1 over x plus 3, and then plugging in the x value. So the point comes from the original function. I already forgot it. 1 over x plus 3? Okay. So plugging in the x value into the original function would give us a point. Um, so 1 half. So there's our point, and we're going to write the equation of a tangent line using those two things.
Hello? Sure, in a minute, I'll send her. Yep, bye bye. Maddie, when we're done, go to the office. Uh, oh, just because of time, let's just finish this. Um, so we would write y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So minus negative 1. And then I'll do the normal line with you right away because the normal line requires the exact same thing as the tangent line. So y minus 1 half equals, so how do you find slope for something that's perpendicular? That's basically what we're doing. The negative reciprocal, right. So it would be positive 4. The normal line is the same as saying something perpendicular. So the tangent line is parallel slope, normal line is perpendicular slope. But they're both using the same point, so that's why I didn't need anything different. Okay, we fit a lot of info in here. <laughs>